بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم ایوری ون ویل وی آر ناؤ ڈویلنگ اپان دا رول آف دی ڈائریکٹرز اینڈ دے فور اٹس ویری امپارٹنٹ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دی ہیمپل تھیوری بیکاز دیٹ ہیز بیسکلی الیبریٹیڈ اینڈ نمریٹیڈ آن دا رول آف دا ڈائریکٹرز آن دی رسپانسبلٹی آف دا ڈائریکٹرز اینڈ ہاؤ دی ڈائریکٹرز شوڈ بیسکلی فنکشن اینڈ دیٹس وائی دس از کنسڈرڈ ایز اے ویری امپارٹنٹ تھیوری ان کارپوریٹ گورننس ناؤ لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹمین وین وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دی اپائنٹمنٹ اینڈ کمپوزیشن آف دا بورڈ آف ڈائریکٹرز دا کمیٹی ریکمینڈیڈ دا فالوئنگ سو Uh, this was basically uh, recommended in the Hempel theory that executive and non-executive directors should continue to have the same duties under the law. Board should appoint only those executives as the executive directors who can take a broad view of the company's overall interest. So what we see is that in the case of both executive directors and non-executive directors, it's very important that whenever they are appointed, uh, they basically should believe in the philosophy, uh, in the existence. Uh, in the objectives, in the vision, in the mission of the organization. That is extremely important. Uh, they should be synchronized and harmonized with the company. If they are not, then they would not be able to uh, provide that relevant and that pertinent input which is required at their very senior position. So for both the executive and non-executive directors, it's very important to assess that how they would be contributing towards the growth and well-being of the organization which is extremely important and that can only be achieved when there's a synchronization and harmonization of the vision, mission, goals, objectives, philosophy and the existence of the company or otherwise there would be a conflict which would be detrimental both for the directors and also for the organization. Now according to the Hempel theory most of the non-executive directors should be independent and board should disclose in the annual report which of the non-executive directors are independent. Separation of the roles of the chairman and chief executive officer is also to be preferred. So like I've been mentioning in so many of my sessions that the separation of chairman and chief executive officer is critical to the success of an organization and also tends to minimize exploitation and manipulation and the collection of authority and power in one particular individual which Uh, would enable that individual to whimsically do whatever he or she wants. And secondly, what we see is, is that there should be proper disclosure of how non-executive directors and directors uh, are basically selected. And then how is it that the non-executive directors are independent? That is a very, very important and critical question. Now, the Hempel theory then further goes ahead that regarding the appointment and composition of the board of directors, the committee recommended the following. Company should set up a nomination committee, which we've talked about earlier. to make recommendations to the board on all new board appointments all the directors should submit themselves for election at least every 3 years so these two criteria became very important one that the nomination committee should recommend the new board appointments and secondly they should be reelected every 3 years which would ensure that there would be a proper process uh, which would uh, be uh, evaluating and monitoring the performance of non executive directors and the board of directors and see how they are performing and through that re-election it would enable the board of directors to ensure that the different committees were performing in the right way. The names of directors submitted for re-election should be accompanied by biographical details so therefore these details should be available. There should be no fixed rules for the length of service or the age of non-executive directors. So age should not be a barring criteria and then again uh, there can be no fixation Uh, of uh, tenure. So they could serve for a long tenure, but based upon re election, there would be a organic, uh, there would be an organic evaluation of the performance of the board. And then thirdly, ensuring that there is proper disclosure whereby uh, selecting them would become an easier process. The board should set as their objective the reduction of directors' contract periods to one year or less, but recognize that this cannot be achieved immediately. So again, yes, one year would be great, but Uh, achieving it is very difficult and complex and the, the board should establish a remuneration committee made up of independent non-executive directors to develop policy on remuneration and devise remuneration packages for individual executive directors. So the remuneration committee is very important especially uh, since the past 10-12 years because earlier on the ch chief executive officer and the executive uh, directors would uh, themselves uh, get uh, phenomenal salaries and uh, the rest of the employees would basically uh, be getting uh, very nominal salaries and there would be such a big disparity 
that this led to a lot of disgruntlement that why are certain people paid uh, obnoxiously phenomenally high salaries while uh, the others were hardly uh, being given subsistence or market based salaries the decisions on the remuneration packages of the executive directors should be delegated to the remuneration committee so again it should be a proper process there should be a proper evaluation and then based upon that evaluation then they can uh, proceed ahead and move forward the disclosure of individual remuneration packages should be retained but the committee considers that this has become too complicated so again what we see is is that this is now a scientific process it has to basically deal uh, with uh, different comparative studies and then uh, a more market based approach can emerge whereby there would be rationalization of remuneration and rationalization of salaries which is extremely important the committee also recommended uh, the requirement to disclose details of individual remuneration which should continue to apply to overseas based directors of uk companies the shareholder approval should be sought for the new long term incentive plan so again uh, all of this is very important so we're not only talking about remuneration we're not only talking about salary but we are also talking about long term incentive plans and also about benefits so how the whole package uh, basically is developed that uh, was focused by the hempel theory so again ladies and gentlemen what we see is is that the hempel theory uh, talked about the very fundamentals of remuneration talked about the fundamentals of appointment and also talked about the fundamentals of how a proper relationship uh, should be uh, developed between the executive and non executive and then how they should be appointed and when they should be elected and then how is it that they could play a better role uh, in the whole organization so that is how the hempel theory basically uh, further uh, improved uh, corporate governance through their set of recommendations thank you so much